My name is Emily, and before all this happened, I was just a dedicated nurse trying to make a difference in the lives of my patients. St Jude's Hospital had been my second home for years, and I took pride in my work, even if it meant long hours and sleepless nights. In truth, I had been pushing myself to the limits. The hospital was understaffed, and I often found myself picking up extra shifts to fill in the gaps. It was during this time that sleep started to elude me, and I became increasingly exhausted. Despite the long hours and sleepless nights, I never lost sight of why I chose this profession. It was the desire to care for those in need, to make a difference in their lives, that kept me going. Few months before, I was serving a patient in his late 70s named Mr. Thompson. His room at St. Jude's Hospital was a stark contrast to the bustling, fluorescent-lit corridors outside. It was a dimly lit, small space with pale, peeling wallpaper that had seen better days. The room contained three hospital beds, each separated by a thin, tattered curtain, offering only a semblance of privacy. The air was heavy with the scent of antiseptic, mingling with the faint but ever-present undercurrent of illness. The room's occupant, aside from Mr. Thompson, was one another patient, on the left side of the room, closest to the window, lay Mrs. Henderson, an elderly woman with wisps of silver hair and a frail, skeletal frame. She spent most of her days in quiet contemplation, her gaze drifting out of the window and into the world beyond. Her condition was seemingly unstable. Her erratic behaviour was the cause of much concern among the hospital staff. He would often speak to the shadows, his voice trembling with fear, and mutter incomprehensible warnings to those who dared to approach him. His condition had deteriorated rapidly, and the nurses and doctors were at a loss to explain his descent into madness. I had finally managed to secure a night off after a string of relentless shifts. I had entrusted the care of my patients to the capable hands of my colleagues. I desperately needed some rest, as fate would have it, it was on that very night that Mrs. Henderson's frail body finally succumbed to the relentless march of time and illness. A few days later, it was a night that had become a recurring nightmare for me. A long, gruelling shift at St. Jude's Hospital, with my exhaustion pushing the boundaries of my sanity. Mr. Thompson lay in his bed, the room cast in eerie shadows for a quick moment from the dimmed lights above. His once feeble voice had grown stronger, and his eyes, though still filled with terror, bore a strange clarity. As I approached his bedside, Mr. Thompson gripped my arm with surprising strength. His voice trembled with urgency as he whispered, Emily, you must listen carefully. The shadows, they come for us when you sleep. I leaned in closer, my exhaustion momentarily forgotten in the face of his words. The shadows? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. He nodded, beads of sweat forming on his wrinkled brow. Yes, the shadows. They're not just shadows, Emily. They're something else, something dark and malevolent. They lurk in the corners of the room, waiting for you to close your eyes, waiting for your guard to drop. I felt a chill run down my spine. Mr. Thompson, you're not making sense. You're not well. I said, my concern evident in my voice. He shook his head, his grip on my arm tightening. No, no, you have to believe me. I've seen them, Emily. When the other nurses sleep during their shifts, the shadows creep closer to the patients. They touch them and then, they're gone. My heart raced as I struggled to comprehend his words. Gone? What do you mean gone? He swallowed hard, his voice barely more than a whisper. They take them, Emily. The shadows take the patient's life away. I glanced around the room, half expecting to see the shadows lurking in the corners, but there was nothing there, just the dimly lit, ordinary hospital room. Mr. Thompson, I think you're hallucinating. You need rest, and I'll make sure you get the care you need, I assured him. But he clung to my arm desperately. Promise me, Emily, promise me you won't sleep. Promise me you won't let them take me. I couldn't bring myself to make such a promise, not fully understanding the delusions that gripped him. 
Instead, I offered a reassuring smile. I'll do my best to keep you safe, Mr. Thompson. You can trust me. As I left his room, his words lingered in my mind, leaving me with an unsettling feeling. Since that event, Mr. Thompson's health had shown remarkable improvement over the past few weeks. It was a bright and sunny morning when I last saw him before my day off. He had been sitting up in bed, chatting with a visiting family member, his eyes filled with a newfound sense of optimism. We had discussed his imminent discharge and plans for his return home, where he hoped to regain his strength and resume a semblance of a normal life. I had left the hospital that day with a sense of contentment, grateful to witness Mr. Thompson's transformation from a man plagued by fear to one filled with hope. I entrusted his care to my capable colleagues and headed home, eager to catch up on much needed sleep and personal time. But the following morning, as I prepared to return to the hospital, a sense of foreboding weighed on my heart. I received a call from Nurse Sarah, the same nurse who had been with Mr. Thompson when Mrs. Henderson had passed away. Her voice trembled as she delivered the devastating news. Emily, she said, her words heavy with sorrow. Mr. Thompson, he's gone. My heart sank and I struggled to grasp the reality of her words. Gone, but he was doing so well. What happened? Nurse Sarah explained that Mr. Thompson had passed away unexpectedly during the night, without any prior signs of deterioration. His monitors had shown no abnormalities, and his family had left the hospital the previous evening with smiles of hope. A few weeks had passed since Mr. Thompson's inexplicable death, but the memory of that unsettling day continued to linger in my mind. My own exhaustion had deepened, as the demands of my job showed no mercy, and I found myself navigating a relentless cycle of sleepless nights and long shifts. One particularly gruelling night, I was moving through the dimly lit corridors, my footsteps echoing softly and the weight of fatigue bearing down on me. The monitors emitted their rhythmic beeps, a reminder of the patients under my care. As I checked on patients, adjusting IV lines and offering words of comfort, I felt a strange sensation wash over me. It was as if a presence had entered the room, a presence that I couldn't quite see or explain. My senses were heightened, my exhaustion making the world feel surreal. And then, in the stillness of that moment, I heard it, a calm and soothing voice that sent shivers down my spine. Emily, you look so tired, it said, gentle and familiar. I froze in my tracks, my heart pounding in my chest. It couldn't be real. Mr. Thompson was gone, his voice silenced forever. Yet there it was again, his voice, unmistakable and serene, as if he were right there in the room with me. Rest, Emily, the voice continued, its words wrapping around me like a comforting embrace. You've been working so hard, you need to sleep. I tried to make sense of the impossible. I had heard stories of nurses experiencing strange phenomena during their exhausting shifts, but I had always dismissed them as the product of overworked minds. I shook my head, attempting to dispel the illusion. This can't be real, I muttered to myself, but the voice persisted, its tone filled with compassion and concern. Sleep, Emily. Let go of your worries. We're here to watch over you. The shadows in the room seemed to dance in time with the voice, their movements taking on a surreal quality. I stumbled back, my mind a whirlwind of confusion and terror. Was it exhaustion playing tricks on me? Or was Mr. Thompson's voice truly reaching out from beyond the grave? As the night wore on, I fought to stay awake, the memory of Mr. Thompson's voice haunting me, urging me to surrender to sleep. Months had passed since that unsettling night when I had heard Mr. Thompson's voice urging me to rest. The memory lingered, haunting my thoughts like a ghostly whisper, but I had never experienced anything like it again. Life at St. Jude's Hospital had returned to its usual routines, filled with the familiar hum of medical equipment, the bustle of staff, 
and the occasional moments of hope and despair that came with caring for patients. I continued to work tirelessly, my exhaustion still a constant companion, but I had learned to dismiss that eerie encounter as a byproduct of my sleep-deprived state. I had convinced myself that it was a figment of my overworked imagination, a manifestation of the stress and fatigue that had gripped me during that challenging time. The room where Mr. Thompson had once been, now occupied by another patient, felt like any other room in the hospital. There were no lingering shadows, no haunting whispers, and no inexplicable phenomena. Life had moved on, and I too had pushed that eerie encounter to the recesses of my mind. Each night as I continued my duties, I couldn't help but glance at that room, a sense of unease creeping over me. But it remained quiet, unremarkable, and void of the mysterious presence that had once visited me. Perhaps it had all been a fevered dream, a hallucination born of exhaustion and stress. Or maybe, just maybe, Mr. Thompson's voice had been a fleeting echo from the other side, a message to remind me of the fragility of life and the importance of rest. Regardless of the truth, I had learned to soldier on, my dedication to my patients unwavering, even in the face of the unexplained.